Hello there, it's me, Silverly B, and today I bring you a tutorial on how to make clocks inspired by the Minecraft clock, the Stardew Valley clock, and the Don't Starve clock. As you can see, these aren't exact replicas, they just use the same mechanics as the clocks mentioned here. For starters, what we're going to be needing is this image right here for the clock sprites, where we have all of the clocks that we're going to be needing, and this time manager script right here that we've done on the past tutorial on how to make a simple analog clock and a digital clock. In order to get this script and these sprites, you can just go in the link down the description for the GitHub repository where you can find all of this as well as what we're going to be doing here today. Okay, so for starters, we're going to start with the Don't Starve clock because it's the simplest one. We can start by creating a canvas here on our scene, so UI canvas. Over here, we can create an empty game object. This is what we're going to be calling the Don't Starve clock. We can focus on this object and here on our main camera, we're going to be changing this color over here to a light gray. Okay, so here we can start by creating a new UI that is going to be our image. We're calling this background. Okay, so here what we're going to be needing is this sprite over here. We can drag and drop it here, set its size to native, and preserve its aspect. We can also duplicate this, and we're going to be name renaming this to the frame. And here we can drag and drop this sprite right here, set its size to native. And here we have the frame for our Don't Starve clock. Over here we can select the background again, hit Ctrl D to duplicate it, and we're going to call this the hand. And this is going to be the hand of the clock. So here we have our hand. I'm going to be using this sprite for our hand. I'll change its color so it's more visible for us. And here we can set its size to native. Another thing is that our hand has to be behind our frame. We have to set its pivot to the bottom, so Alt Shift and to the bottom. And here we have to position it so that the bottom of it sits right here on the middle of our clock. So here we can see what our clock looks like. Here, as we can see on our reference, the Don't Starve clock has a daytime, a dusk time, and also a night time. Here on our project, what we're going to be doing is just having a daytime and a nighttime. There won't be any dusk time. So in order for us to work with the daytime and the nighttime, first we're going to set this to a more yellowish color. And here we can duplicate this background. You can call this day background. And here we're going to be renaming this to the night background. This one is going to have a bluish tint and be a bit darker. So here we have our day background and our night background. Our night background for now covers our entire day background, but to fix this, we just need to change the image type here from simple to field. The fill method should be radio 360 and you should have this fill amount right here. As we can see, this is what it looks like right now. Here, we can see that the fill origin is from the bottom. If we change it to the top, we can see that it looks a little bit more like the Don't Starve clock, but it's kind of mirrored. To change this, just uncheck this clockwise, and this should be giving us a section of the circle, depending, of course, of how much of our day does our night time take. So here we have it, our day and night, and we can control the size of the night section. Of course, if you wanted to, you could have a different background image that had already the day and the night background divided in their respective sections, but we're doing it this way so that we can control how long does our night take. Okay, so now we can start with our scripts. If you look at the time manager, it doesn't have, right now, a variable that tells us how long our night's supposed to last. In order to fix this, we can open this up on Visual Studio and start working with the script. 
To work with a day-night cycle, we're going to be needing to know how long does our night last and at what time does our day start. Okay, so here we can ask for a public float. That is going to be the night duration. This is supposed to be a float between 0 and 1. Here we're going to be using 0.4f, but you can use whatever number that represents how much of your day does your night takes. Okay, so the other variable that we need is also a float that is going to give us the sunrise hour. At what time does our sun rises? So here we have it. Another way we could do this is instead of using a night duration, you would use a sunrise hour and a sunset hour and get the night duration from that. In order to make it better for us, we're going to be creating here a public float. Here it's just going to be a little equation that will give us the current sunset hour. So here we can say that the sunset hour is going to be the sunrise hour plus the duration of the day and the duration of the day is going to be 1 minus night duration multiplied by the hours in a day, okay? And this is going to be getting us the sunrise hour. The problem here is if our night duration is a very, very small number and or our sunrise hour is a very high number, maybe the sunrise hour plus the duration of the day is going to be a number equal or greater than the hours in the day. What we need to do to correct this problem before it arises is we need to get the rest of the division of this by the hours in a day. So this right here will never be a number greater than 24, which is the hours in our day. We can save this. And as I said, you could just use the reverse logic to ask for a sunset hour and get a night duration from that. It's just that we need these two informations, okay? So we can save this and head to Unity. And here we're going to be creating a new script that is going to handle our don't starve clock. We can open this up on Visual Studio and right here we can ask for a time manager. Okay, that is going to be the reference to this time manager that we have on the scene. For now, we have not created the time manager in our scene, but we have to do so before we can run this code. Here, the time manager is going to be find object of type time manager. And what we're going to be needing here is first a reference to the hand of our clock. So rect transform hand. And we're also going to need a constant float that is going to give us the hours to degrees. This is going to be 360 because the clock has 360 degrees divided by 24 because the don't starve clock hand rotates a full rotation in a day. In order to change the rotation of our hand, we can just say hand.rotation. It is going to be equal to quaternion.euler. And here on our x-axis is going to be zero, the rotation on the y-axis is going to be zero as well. And we're just going to rotate on the z-axis. We can just say that tm.getHour multiplied by hours to degrees. And this needs to be minus so that it goes clockwise. And this is a function that we're calling. And this is going to be giving us the rotation of our hand. We can save this and head into Unity. We can configure this clock. So first, let's create an empty game object. That is going to be our timekeeper. This will have the time manager script. And over here on our don't starve clock, we can drag and drop this script. It asks us for the hand, drag and drop the reference. And when we hit play, we can see how it's working. So here we can see that the script is currently working, but there is a problem. The first problem is the fill amount of this night background. It's supposed to be equal to the night duration. In order to do so, we can go back to our script. And here 
we'll need a reference to this image. To use the image, we are also going to be needing the Unity Engine dot UI. And over here, we'll need a reference to this image that we'll be using. So here, night background. In order to change the fill amount of this image, we just need night background dot fill amount. And here it's going to be equal to time manager dot night duration. Okay, this is looking good. If we save this, we can see here on Unity that when we hit play, oh, we haven't set the reference. So here on our don't start clock, just set the reference to the night background as the night background. Hitting play, we can see that it works. It sets the section to be equal to the size of the night. For instance, if we were to go here on the timekeeper and change the night duration from 0.4 to something like 0.8, then we hit play, we can see that the section of the night is now greater than the section of the day. We'll change this to 0.4 again. And now what we need to fix is the starting point of this clock hand. The thing is, our clock starts at midnight, and here we can see that it is pointing to the sunrise hour. In order to fix this, we need to make it point to the correct angle, that means midnight. So going back to our script, we're going to create a new float called start rotation. Our start rotation is going to be equal to pm dot sunrise hour multiplied by the hours to degrees. Here we just need to add the start rotation on our rotation. Saving this, we can go back to Unity and check to see if it's right. When we hit play, we can see that our clock starts at an angle and when it hits 6 o'clock, it is the sunrise hour. In order to check it better, to know exactly what time it is, we're going to be making a clock here, a 24 hour clock. This one will be just checking if the hour that we are seeing is the correct hour. So you don't actually need to do this clock over here, but we're going to be using the digital clock. And when we hit play, we can fact check that it hits sunrise at exactly six o'clock. Okay, so here we can pause this. And now that we have our don't starve clock, we're going to put it to a side and we're going to start working on our Minecraft clock. Let's create an empty game object called Minecraft clock. And here we are also going to create a new game object that is going to be our sky dome. First, let's add an image here that is going to be the background. This is going to be the day background. We can preserve its aspect and set its size to native. Here, we can choose a bluish tint to be our day background. We can close this. And duplicating this, we can rename this new object as night background. And just like on our don't starve clock, we can change its image to field and use a fill amount of half. So now it takes up half of our clock and we're going to be using the same purple that we use on our don't start clock, but you can choose whatever color suits your game better. Here we're going to change its fill origin from bottom to right and this is looking good. Now we just need to duplicate this, change the sprite to the sun, set its size to native, change its color back to white, so it has its natural color and we can change its name to just sun. We can duplicate this, use the sprite for the moon and now position it on the Y as minus whatever the position you use for the sun. So here we have our sky dome and if we give it a rotation, we can see that all the elements are rotated together. This is what we want. Okay, so we can return to zero. And now what we need is just to create a new UI image. And this is going to be the frame of our Minecraft clock. Drag and drop this right over here. Set its size to native, preserve its aspect, 
and position it so that it's right on top of the division. What we're going to be doing to our clock is just rotating it just like on Minecraft. So we can reset this and start working on our Minecraft clock script. So create a new C-sharp script called Minecraft clock. We can open it up on Visual Studio and here we have it. Just like on our Don't Start clock, we're going to need a reference to the time manager. So time manager TM. And we're going to need a public reference to the rec transform of our sky dome. This is what we're going to be rotating and we need a reference to it. Here we can say that TM is going to be equal to find object of type time manager. Okay, so now in order to get the hours to degrees, we can't just use a single constant because, well, there are two parts of our sky dome the night part and the day part. And unless the night duration is half of the day, then the rotation during the night and the rotation during the day are going to be different. Because for instance, in Minecraft, the night passes way more quickly than the day. So in order to manage this, we're going to need two floats, one for the night and one for the day. The value of these two floats will not change, but to set them, we need the reference to the time manager. So night hours to degrees is going to be 180 because it's half the circumference of the sky dome divided by, and here we're going to need the time manager and the actual class because we'll be using a public const in it, which is the hours in a day multiply by tm, and this is the reference that we just got, and we need to get the night duration. Okay, this is looking good. Now, in order to get the day, hours to degrees, we'll use the same logic, but this time, instead of just using tm night duration, we're going to use one minus tm night duration. Okay, this is looking good. Now, what we need to do is the rotation of the sky dome is going to be depending on whether or not it's nighttime or daytime. In order to check if it's nighttime, we're going to use the time manager dot get hour. And in order to be night, this current hour has to be less than the sunrise hour. Another possibility for it to be nighttime is that the current hour is greater than the sunset hour. So if the current hour is before the sunrise or after the sunset, then it's night and our sky domes should rotate. And here we are not setting its rotation. We are giving it a value to rotate. And this is going to be zero on the X, zero on the Y. And on the Z axis, we're going to be using minus time dot delta time multiplied by time manager dot hours in day multiplied by the night hours to degrees divided by tm dot day duration and when it's day we can just copy this value and say that else sky down rotation is going to be equal to this and instead of night hours to degrees we're going to be using day hours to degrees Saving this, we can head back to Unity to check if this is working. Here on our Minecraft clock, we can drag and drop this and set the reference for the sky dome. In order to see this better, we're going to make the night less half of what it used to in order to see it go by quickly. So here we can see that it's quick, but when we hit 6 o'clock, it should slow down. But because its starter rotation is about noon, this clock is not working quite as it should. In order to fix this, what we need is also a starting rotation to our sky dome. And because here we're passing an amount for it to rotate, we can just set at the beginning its rotation to quaternion.euler. 
So it's starting rotation is going to be zero on the x axis, zero on the y, and on the z it's going to be 90 plus tm dot sunrise hour multiplied by the night hours to degrees. It should be noted that currently we have a night duration of 0.2, which means that our day starts at 6 a.m. and our night will start at about 1 a.m. This means we have a problem with this code as it currently stands, because this here will always be true. This happens because currently our sunset hour is less than our sunrise hour. So if that's the case, you should use an AND here. So AND, if you save this, we can check. And here on Unity, when we hit play, this should be working properly. So here we can see that at night it starts going fast and at day it slows down. Now, as we can see, it's working properly. It starts the day at 6 o'clock and at about 1 a.m. it starts the night. But because normally here on our time keep, our night duration is 0.4, we need to fix our code again. Here, for a sunset hour that is greater than the sunrise hour, this will have to be an OR instead of an AND. But the thing is, we want the code to do the work for us. We want it to know that if the sunset hour is greater than the sunrise hour, then here it is going to be an OR. And if it's not, if the sunset hour is less than the sunrise hour, we're going to be using an AND. So in here, we're going to be using an if statement that is a bit more complicated, but if you understood that logic, it's quite simple to get it. So what we have here is, first we check to see if the sunrise hour is less than the sunset hour. If it is, we need a OR here, because at the beginning of the day, we have to check if the hour is before the sunrise or if the hour is after the sunset in order to know if it's night. Now, when the sunrise hour is greater than the sunset hour, the night lasts so little that the sun sets on the a.m. hours, you know, 1 a.m. or 3 a.m. or even 4 a.m., depending on how long does your night last. So here, whenever the sunrise is greater than the sunset hour, we have to check both of these conditions. Let's save this and check to see if it works over here on Unity. In order to check if this is working, let's make our day last a bit less. For instance, let's make it last 5 seconds. Let's start with a 0.4 for the night duration and check to see what this looks like. So during the day, it slows down. During the night, it speeds up. And here, if we change the night duration from 0.4 to 0.2, we can see that the night now is going to pass a lot faster and the clock is going to start during the day because at midnight, the sun still hasn't set. It only sets at about 1 a.m. So let's hit play and check to see if this is working. As we can see, it slows down during the day and the night passes really fast. Okay, so this clock is working. Now, the last clock that we have to do is the Stardew Valley clock. Let's create an empty game object for it and call this Stardew Valley. If you look at the reference, you can see that the clock is sideways and that there's also a 12 hour clock with it. Here, we're going to make the clock facing up and we're not making the 12 hour clock. If you want to check out a tutorial on how to make a 12 hour clock, there will be a link on the description where you can go watch a tutorial on it. But here, for us, we're going to start by moving the Minecraft clock and here on our Stardew Valley clock, we're going to add a image that is going to be the background. And here you can use this sprite over here and you can select to preserve its aspect and set its size to native. In order to make the frame, you can just duplicate this and rename this to frame. And we're going to be using this sprite over here. As we can see, the sprite is only half 
the circle and in order for the background to fit it we're going to change its image type from simple to field here it's going to be a radial fill it's going to be filled by half and it's going to start at the left okay so now we have to position our frame in order to fit this background we can set its size to native in order for it to fit better so here we have our frame and our background we're also going to be needing a hand for our clock we can duplicate this call this hand position it behind the frame and we are using this sprite over here we're going to change its color to black or at least a darker color and we can set its size to native so here we have our hand we also need to pivot it to the bottom so shift and select the bottom over here we need it we need to position it right about here so this is looking good if you want you can also use this sprite over here for the hand it's also bigger but i'll be using this one that's smaller so on our stardew valley clock just like on our minecraft clock and on our don't starve clock there will be a night background you can see on the stardew reference that there is a night and a day and just like on our stardew valley clock we're going to be making this night and day separation on our clock but if you have a pre-made background then you don't need to worry about this night background we use this night background separated from the day background because then we can change the size of the night now if your game has a preset size of the night then you can pre-make a background and it's going to be working wonders but since this is not our case what we're going to be doing is first we're going to pick this color over here and this is going to be our day background we can duplicate this hitting ctrl d set it behind all of this but before the background rename this hitting f2 you can rename it and we can rename this to night background so now this one we're going to be using this color over here and when we change the fill amount we can see how this is working as we can see this is not exactly what we want what we want is for this to be positioned on the right and we need to set it anti-clockwise okay so this is looking good this is how our clock is looking right now let's make the script that is going to be using this clock right here so create c sharp script let's call this stardew clock we can open it up so here on visual studio we can start by asking for a reference to the time manager okay so it's going to be time manager tm and this is going to be equal to find object of type time manager now what we need is also to use unity engine.ui because we'll be dealing with the night background here we can ask for the image oh sorry this is capitalized here we can ask for the image it's going to be the night background and this is going to start with a fill amount equal to tm dot night duration but because this is half a circle we need to divide this by two. Oh, this is the fill amount okay another reference that we're going to be needing is the hand of the clock so this is a rect transform that is going to be the hand and at last we are going to be needing a constant that will be a float of the hours to degrees this is going to be equal to 180 because this is half a circle divided by 24 because this is the amount of hours in a day you could also use the time manager dot hours in a day if you want to so now we have to set the rotation of the hand and this time you're gonna have to trust me on this one but this is going to be quaternion dot euler and on the x axis is going to be zero on the y as well on the z this is where we're going to be putting our equation because the way the clock is positioned here the rotation is going to be equal to 90 minus hours to degrees multiplied by the time manager dot get hour 
plus time manager dot hours in a day minus the sunrise hour so tm dot sunrise hour and we need to get the rest of the division of this by 24 so time manager dot hours in a day so that this gives us a number between 0 and 24. We just forgot to use a parenthesis over here. So this over here should be multiplied by this. And saving this, we can head back to Unity. Let's hit play and check to see how it does. Okay, it looks great. And whenever we start the day, here we can see it's 727 and it just started the day. Another thing to notice is the change on this clock may seem a little bit brusque, but this is because on Stardew Valley, the day is not continuous. If you don't sleep on the game by 2 a.m., then you pass out and you wake up at 6 a.m. This is why this clock is like this. So it jumps from about here to over here. And this is why it happens. Another thing to notice is that on Stardew Valley, the day goes from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m., but here on our clock, it goes up until 5.59 a.m., and it starts again at 6 a.m. But since here we're only focusing on the mechanic of the clock, this is working just fine for us. Another thing to consider is that here on our hand, if we rotate it 90 degrees, we can see that it goes a bit over what we expect it to go like a few pixels here are showing up in order to fix this we can go back to zero and we can raise this hand a bit now whenever we go to 90 degrees we can see that it's hidden by the frame now on our timekeeper we can reset our night to last point four we can hit play and see now for one last thing if we were to rotate the stardew valley clock so that it has the same rotation as the actual Stardew Valley clock. When we hit play, we can see that the hand does not follow the rotation of its parent. This is because if we go to our script, we can see that we are setting here the hand dot rotation. In order for it to follow the rotation of its parent, we just need to use local rotation. Saving this, we can head back into Unity and this should be working just fine. As we can see, it now follows the rotation of the parent and it has the original rotation of the Stardew Valley clock. So this was it for today guys, thank you so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to leave a like. If you like these kinds of tutorials, please consider subscribing. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, see you next time, bye!